Harry Good was a pioneer and leader in the field of system engineering and the principal architect of what became the American Federation of Information Processing Societies, or AFIPS. In recognition of his pursuit of excellence, the Harry H. Good Memorial Award honors those who have made outstanding contributions to the information processing sciences. Recipients of the Harry H. Good Memorial Award receive a bronze medal and a $2,000 honorarium. Yale N. Pat is a professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. He thrives on teaching at every level, from his large classes of 400 plus introductory freshman students, to his advanced graduate courses in microarchitecture, to the personal attention he gives to the eight current PhD students whose research he is directing. Professor Pat has seen some of his own research lead to the development of cutting edge chips for the likes of Intel and AMD. But his passion is in the classroom, where his enthusiastic and creative teaching style has resulted in a bottom-up approach for introducing computing to serious students. His textbook, Introduction to Computing Systems, From Bits and Gates to See and Beyond, co-authored with Professor Sanjay Patel, is now in its third printing. It has been adopted by more than 100 universities worldwide and has been translated into Spanish and Chinese. For his nearly 50 years of significant contributions to microarchitecture and for the untold current and future industry leaders he has inspired, we present Yale N. Pat with the 2013 Harry H. Good Memorial Award. Today, Yale Pat's contributions to microarchitecture include superscalar wide issue processors, branch prediction, and data prefetching. He was recently inducted into the National Academy of Engineering. Yale's nearly 50 years of work speaks for itself. But if you don't think so, feel free to pull Yale aside for five minutes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my good friend Yale Pat. It's a pleasure to be back here. Uh, with the Computer Society. I have not been here in a while. Uh, the last time you invited me to give a, a talk at a uh, 60th anniversary celebration, and I told you all the things that I thought were wrong with the Computer Society and needed fixing. <laughs> I decided not to do that tonight, <laughs> even though uh, there's still some familiar faces, which it's a pleasure to see. Uh, Anne Marie Kelly, Angela Burgess, uh, my good friend, uh, Rich Belgard, uh, my student, student uh, Tom Conti. I remember when he was a, a pain in the ass graduate student. <laughs> He's now a pain in the ass president-elect. <laughs> it is indeed an honor to receive this award. Uh, what I'd like to do with my uh, two minutes, they told me I should take less than 20. They've negotiated that. I won't take 20. I will probably take more than two, is to acknowledge the uh, three uh, reasons or three people, sets of people, that are responsible for me being up here tonight. Uh, the first is my mother, the most incredible human being that ever lived, a poor immigrant from Eastern Europe at the age of 20. She looked around, told her parents, this is no place for me. I'm going to America, the American dream. She met my father, who came as a young boy, also from Eastern Europe. We grew up in a very poor neighborhood uh, close to Boston. She had, they had three children. I was the first of the neighborhood to go to college. My brother was the second of the neighborhood to go to college. My sister was the third. Uh, most of the people who I went to uh, uh, you know, high school, et cetera, with quit when they were 16, went to work in the factory. Uh, which was part of our town, uh, Malden, Massachusetts. An immigrant, she taught me three major things with respect to my professional career. One, an A minus is unacceptable. You will succeed. Number two, the French call it noblesse oblige. 
When you get to a point where you have the authority to do something, it's your job to protect those who don't have the ability to protect themselves. That stayed with me forever. And number three, don't be afraid to do what you think is right, even though you're going against conventional wisdom. You'll take a lot of flack. I've certainly taken a lot of flack. You mentioned the academy. So I got an email from somebody who says, it's good to see that you can speak your mind and still get into the academy. <laughs> so I wrote back and said, yeah, but they made, it, they made me wait till I was 75 years be old before they let me in, see? <laughs> My mother, an immigrant. Immigration. I understand we're an international community, and I'm an American, proud to be American, a little less proud than I used to be, but I have faith that we will recover to where we were when I was uh, born. Immigration is at the, the fabric. It's part of the core of my country. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. If you are American, whether you're first generation like me or whether you've been here for a while, I hope you'll stand firm and make immigration continue to be part of the fabric and the core values of my country. Bravo. Second is my, my mentor. Not my major professor, but my mentor, Professor William K. Winville. I wish he was still alive today to see me uh, receiving this award. Uh, Bill Winville, my professor in graduate school, with him it was all about students. He didn't do what was best for him, he did what was best for his students. I remember when he formed the Engineering Economic Systems Department, and I said, Bill, I'd love to come over and be a graduate student in your department. He says, no, 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 you're a double E student, and you're going to one of the best double E programs in the world, and you've passed a qualifying exam, I am not going to let you give that up to come and work for me, because I don't know whether my department's going to make it or not. If you, after you graduate with a PhD in EE, if you then want to join me, then we'll talk about it. But right now, I'm not going to let you give up what's important to you. That was Bill Winville. That was just one simple example of what the man stood for. The professor who taught me how to be a professor. And I want to acknowledge him. Thirdly, my students. People have talked about their students already. I can't not do the same. I've graduated 29 PhDs in the 48 years that I've been since my PhD, starting with Hamid Olozi at North Carolina State, who did his work in multi-valued logic, graduated in 1973, took a job at IBM. 30 years later, he retired and is now living off the land back in Cairo, Egypt. His wife, incidentally, also got her PhD at North Carolina State in 1973, while also giving birth to their firstborn, Sharif, who's now a big deal physician in New York. So she got her PhD, she gave birth. She also took a job 30 years later. They're both in Cairo. He's living off the land. She's the director of learning and teaching. And by the way, they've got it right, learning and teaching, rather than the other way around, at American University of Cairo. Then I moved to Berkeley, where I had six PhDs. John Swenson who's uh, uh, graduated in 1987. His thesis involved recognizing that you need a couple of very fast uh, registers in order to take sequential flow, the latency of sequential flow, and a huge number of slow registers to deal with parallel things. Sequential flow like Horner's rule, parallel things like inner product of large vectors. Then my three students who worked with me on HPS, which is probably the best piece of work that we did, Wen Mei Hu, who's now an endowed chair at the University of Illinois. Mike Shebenow, who is one of the leaders of the FAMI Project NVIDIA, now uh, at uh, Samsung directing their be-all and end-all of uh, graphics chips to come, and Steve Melvin, who uh, never wanted to work for anybody except himself. The four of us together did HPS. I didn't do it alone. And that was at Berkeley uh, during the mid and late 80s. The other two Berkeley students that I graduated, Ashok Singhal and uh, Chen Chen, worked on implementing prolog machines. They graduated in 1990 and 1991. Uh, then I moved to Michigan, where I graduated 12 PhDs. 12 PhDs, starting with Mike Butler, who did the bull bulldozer core at AMD and has now joined Shebenow at Samsung. Then Seiyu Ye, my, the guy who did the branch predictor, uh, 
branch prediction algorithm with me, which is now in just about every high performance uh, core. Uh, then Robert Ho. Robert has the distinction of working for four different companies without ever leaving his desk. Because when he got his degree in 1994, he took a job with Tandem, which was bought by Digital, which was bought by Compaq, which was bought by HP. And so without ever leaving his desk, four different companies. Then my two I.O. subsystems guys, uh, Greg Ganger and um, uh, Bruce Worthington. Greg is now the Jatris Endowed Chair at Carnegie Mellon. Bruce Worthington is now uh, on the research staff at, at Microsoft. Uh, then Eric Howe, who did a compiler for the block structured ISA. Uh, then uh, Po Young Chang, who worked on monolithic branch prediction. Uh, Eric graduated in uh, uh, 97 and uh, Po Young in 98. 1999, the last year I was at Michigan, I graduated three PhDs, Sanjay Patel, who I've already mentioned in the, the video, who co-authored my freshman book, who uh, worked on uh, the trace cache. And in fact, he showed, he uh, wasn't the one who invented the trace cache, but it turns out the baseline trace cache is not as good as a sophisticated uh, uh, instruction cache, but the enhancements that Sanjay provided, partial matching, inactive issue, uh, branch promotion, and trace packing made it a real win. It was adopted by Intel on one of their uh, subsequent trips, uh, chips. Uh, Sanjay is now a full professor at Illinois, graduated in 99. Then Mark Evers graduated also in 1999, who's at AMD, worked on branch prediction, and Jared Stark, who uh, uh, is at uh, Intel and was the, uh, did the, the, un the unusual thing of saying, what happens when you take cash mi uh, an iCache miss? Can you do out of order fetch? Uh, then I took the remaining PhD students, moved to Texas. Mary Brown, my first female PhD, uh, got her PhD in 2005 and was the lead architect on IBM's Power 8, Power, actually one of the lead architects on IBM's Power 8, Power 9 chips until she left uh, uh, about a month ago to join uh, Apple as one of their lead architects. Then owner Mutlu, probably the most productive young computer architect today, who is now the, uh, who has the um, Strecker endowed chair for mid-career people at Carnegie Mellon University, who uh, did his research in uh, uh, run-ahead execution, uh, followed by Hessen Kim, who is now an endowed chair, my second female PhD, uh, not, who uh, came up with the WISH branch, uh, which shows that you can have the compiler make the first decision but relegate the final decision to the hardware which has the benefit of runtime information. She's now a tenured associate professor at Georgia Tech. Moin Qureshi, who did enormously good work on last level cash behavior, who's also an associate professor uh, at Georgia Tech. Uh, then Arthur Solomon, my first uh, student who uh, produced a thesis dealing with uh, heterogeneous cores. We showed that rather than have all Mickey Mouse cores as uh, Sun was doing with Niagara, or all heavyweight cores, as Intel was doing with uh, Core Duo or Quad Core, it'd be a lot better to have a big heavyweight and lots of Mickey Mouse. And so if you have instruction level parallelism, use the heavyweight. If you have thread level parallelism, use the Mickey Mouse. Uh, that was after Solomon got out in 2010. Also in late 2010 uh, was Chengju Lee. Uh, Chengju's thesis was dealing with the the peculiarities of the DRAM, the memory controller interfacing against the DRAM, he's now at Intel. Then Iman Ebrahimi, who got out in 2011, and his thesis involved, what do you do with all these cores when they share resources? Uh, Iman now works for uh, NVIDIA. This year, my last two PhDs, and thank you for the indulgence, and my two minutes is probably almost up. <laughs> Venu Narasimhan, did his PhD on how do you, how do you uh, modify the GPU to handle database applications. He's now working for Samsung on this be all and end all of GPU chips. And a few weeks ago, my, 12, uh, my 10th and final Texas PhD, my 29th PhD altogether, uh, graduated with his uh, dissertation in MorphCore. MorphCore says you need the heavyweight when you've got lots of ILP. And you need the SMT chip when you've got lots of TLP, thread-level parallelism. 
Well, what happens when you have no ILP? That is, will you need the Mickey Mouse chip and save power? So he came up with MorphCore, which says that we can design the core in such a way that we can morph it. There are some Greeks in the audience, you know, morph, change. We can morph it depending on what it is uh, you want to do. And he got his degree a couple weeks ago and has uh, moved to Apple. Uh, I would not be standing up here today if it hadn't been for my mother, if it hadn't been for Professor Linville at Stanford, and if it hadn't been for my 29 PhDs uh, that I graduated so far. I'm at uh, mid-career, so I hope to have another 29 <laughs> before I close it out. But in fact, who knows, maybe I'll be back again. And if I am, I'll tell you what's wrong with the computer society and needs fixing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.